It's more than having shared interests like sports or work. And it's more than having good conversations. It's about loyalty in hard times, and it's about pointing each other to the Lord as the ultimate way to get our needs met. That's biblical friendship. David took Jonathan's words very seriously, and the two of them made a covenant with one another there in the field. Jonathan promised to serve David and protect him, and David swore to show Jonathan and his entire household love and favor. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Farley, and I'm excited to welcome you to this episode of the Heartbeat of Faith podcast. We've combed through our biblical sagas to find inspiring pictures and overarching themes that can encourage us in our faith. This week, we're exploring biblical relationships, and today's episode is about friendship, a bond formed in the fires of adversity and hardship. Many friendships in the Bible point us toward Christ's perfect love, and Scripture gives us a beautiful picture of solid biblical friendship. Brothers, Even if a man is caught in some fault, you who are spiritual must restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself so that you also aren't tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 1-2 To him who is ready to faint, kindness should be shown from his friend, even to him who forsakes the fear of the Almighty. Job 6.14 A man of many companions may be ruined, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 18.24 David and Jonathan are one of the best examples of friendship in the Bible. They shared a deep bond that enabled them to trust each other despite their different positions in life. Jonathan yielded his own claim to the throne and supported David with all his heart. This spoke volumes about the depth of their friendship, as it could have been uncomfortable for either one of them. But their loyalty toward each other prevailed. Jonathan was willing to do whatever it took to ensure David would succeed. He even confronted his father on David's behalf. David held his promise to Jonathan above any other oath or commitment in his life, carrying it to the grave. David paused for a moment. He felt his tears returning. He regained his composure and stood up. You and I have made a promise to be friends. However, if you find any guilt in me, you should kill me yourself. Jonathan sprang to his feet and said, Nonsense! Come, let us go out into the field. So the two walked through the fields. Jonathan put his arm around David and said, I shall send word of Saul's temperament. Jonathan paused and became very serious. Listen, God will show you favor wherever you go. He will exalt you as king and destroy all those that make you their enemy. Please, show love to my house when God removes your enemies. David took Jonathan's words very seriously, and the two of them made a covenant with one another there in the field. Jonathan promised to serve David and protect him, and David swore to show Jonathan and his entire household love and favor. It's more than having shared interests like sports or work, and it's more than having good conversations. It's about loyalty in hard times, and it's about pointing each other to the Lord as the ultimate way to get our needs met. That's biblical friendship. Ruth and Naomi's friendship is an example of unconditional love and devotion. When Ruth's husband died, 
She made the difficult decision to stay with her mother-in-law instead of returning home to her own family. Although they weren't blood relatives, Ruth remained loyal to Naomi, even through extreme hardship, proving that true friendships can transcend relationships based on blood or family. Together, they struggled against poverty and tragedy while comforting each other along the way, showing that even when times are tough, two people can still lean on each other for support. Ruth took Naomi's hands and looked her deep in the eyes. With a gentle voice, Ruth said, Wherever you go, I will go also. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And wherever you die, so I will also. Naomi's heart overflowed with gratitude, and the two women ventured back to Bethlehem to Naomi's family. Ruth displayed true devotion, friendship, and a willingness to share in the joys and failures of life with Naomi. Abraham and Lot's friendship is a testament to the power of unconditional kindness. When the two men had to part ways due to their flocks growing too large, Abraham offered Lot an entire portion of the land before negotiating where they would go. This act showed that Abraham was generous, not just with his wealth, but also with his heart and spirit. He saw beyond any familial ties between them, and chose to make sure his nephew was taken care of in any situation. This represented a deep trust and respect between both men that was rooted in their spiritual connection. Eventually, Lot finds himself in dire straits, and Abraham did not hesitate to rescue him. Abram and Lot both increased in riches and influence, so much so that their livestock, servants, and warriors could no longer inhabit the same land. To keep their people from warring against one another, Abram proposed they separate. Separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right, then I will go to the left. Lot took Abram up on his generous offer and looked out at the Jordan Valley and saw that it was full of fertile plains in the direction of Zor. The plains were watered everywhere and reminded him of the old stories of the Garden of Eden. Lot chose the whole Jordan Valley and everything east of them. He then took his flocks and servants there, then parted with Abram and settled in the land of Sodom. The friendship between Jesus and his disciples exemplifies how true friends can support each other through difficult times. Despite all the obstacles that presented themselves, from betrayals to denials, Jesus remained loyal to his disciples until the very end. He always managed to look beyond their faults or failures, embracing them for who they were instead of judging them for mistakes made in the past. Jesus reached out to those excluded by society, offering them solace, hope, and healing. He emphasized time and time again the importance of looking out for one another and trusting those close to us, no matter how difficult the journey might be, proving that friendship should be based on love and loyalty while accepting each other's weaknesses and imperfections. This is my commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for everything that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, 
that whatever you will ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. John 15, 12 through 16. Proverbs says some friends are closer than blood relatives, and that may be true with our very best friends. But remember, God is our closest friend of all. In the rich tapestry of the New Testament, we find the profound declaration that we're not merely servants, but friends of God. Jesus himself says in John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. This is a breathtaking revelation. In Christ, we are welcomed into an intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. In James 2.23, Abraham was called God's friend. And we too have been invited into this unparalleled friendship. Imagine the magnitude of that honor. The benefits of this divine friendship are immeasurable. We're assured of God's unwavering loyalty, His infinite love, and His boundless grace. Rest in this truth. The Lord of all creation cherishes you, values you, and desires a deep relationship with you. You are truly a friend of God. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Heartbeat of Faith podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode or learned something new about the Bible, share it with a friend or family member. Download the Pray.com app. And for more encouragement in God's grace, visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. America's federal debt just reached $33 trillion, and many economists predict the weight of this crippling debt load will soon topple the whole financial system. Concerned Americans are diversifying their assets into physical gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. If you want a physical asset held in a tax-sheltered retirement account, you should call Birch Gold too. But learn for yourself. Text the word HEARTBEAT to 989898 and they'll send you a free info kit on gold. If you have an IRA or a 401k from a previous employer just gathering dust, Birch Gold can help you convert it into an IRA in gold, and you don't have to pay a penny out of pocket. Text HEARTBEAT to the number 989898 to claim your free info kit on gold. There's no cost or obligation, so do it now. Text HEARTBEAT to 989898.